Hello! And welcome to <laughs> episode 32 oh, of Road to Distraction. Yay! Yay. Who would have thought people would still want to see 32 episodes? Perhaps they don't. I know, I mean, but well. We don't care. The, the <laughs> past few episodes got quite a few views, 50 odd. Um, really? Uh, last before one had. Nice, nice, nice. See, before YouTube changed all this setup where your videos would pop on and get knocked down throughout the day, my videos, these videos, we used to get like a hundred yeah. odd, two hundred odd video views within about a week or so. Now, some of my videos are getting like 35 and 50 views and that's within six months. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But you know, thanks YouTube. And also thanks to Google support for not answering my support query, which has been on there now for about a month. Yay, well done Google support. Yeah. You know how to look after your people. Tommy, you just keep developing Google Glass. Yeah. And Google Glasses, which are going to be banned by everywhere anyway. Yeah. And Google Shoes. Pardon? Yeah, didn't you hear? No, come but on, do tell! The concept of these shoes that actually talk to the user whilst they're walking. <sighs> why? Just why? I don't think I need my shoes to talk to me. I definitely don't need my toaster to talk to me. But could you imagine knowing you in the factory making those shoes when you yeah, oh yeah, you'd have to be walking and soon seem to do something wrong. Like you have your Google glasses on, suddenly you bring up a porn site on your phone. Mm. And suddenly it goes, hey, stop looking at that woman's ass, your phone goes. <laughs> That'd be cool, I love that. Anyway. Here we go. All right, I got a uh, short story. There's a picture on screen now of possibly the world's most ugliest ever creature. And it's called Bonos Stegos. Uh, it was a reptile the size of a cow which rolled in the desert before the dinosaurs. It's pretty ugly. It is very, very ugly, and it's covered, its head's covered in all these like tumours and things. Um, I can't actually provide you any more story because my printer had a fit and it's printed everything out in this strange alien language. <laughs> uh, it actually says, Pocket, Yavas, no Boyal, a bin back. I got it. Eba, I, Ada, Bim, S back. Astom, Tempit, what? It sounds like Latin. Espoite be oed caso adbo. Right, Connor. Please say your stories, Connor. Um. Here we go in now. In Canada, I had to find the bloody name of it next to me, right at the top. In a restaurant diner in Canada, a person. That is right, Bob Herb. Stopped off for a bite to eat at the Old West Express Diner in the province of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Yeah, Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Um, when he got to walk in with, to the owner, Clifford Luther. Um, in the end, after having his meal, he left a $10,000 tip. Nice. Good man. That's what I like. That's cool. Ten grand. It was a, I wouldn't have told him and just put my ass pocket. <laughs> yeah. He'd asked for a pen after having a conversation with the owner and said you could take the bill out of that. It was a check for ten thousand dollars. Oh, it's a check, damn. And he had said to him, if you need to get out here quickly, this will help you. <laughs> That's the way. Now I've I've got um a couple of stories today, but I I don't know which one to actually start with first. But I'm gonna start with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. Oh, they've like just it. had a child. Well, they've aptly thought it was a brilliant idea to name North. So their child, their son, is called Northwest. What's his middle feckin' names? <laughs> South and East? <laughs> oh, come on, Northwest? What is wrong with that? And Miss Kardashian, or? Miss West, or whatever you're bloody going to be called now, you really thought, oh yeah, what an awesome idea, let's call us a Northwest. You should be fecking blonde. You complete bint. 
Oh yeah, I'm famous for I need my son to have a quirky name. Yep, you need him to have the chit taken out of him and he'd sound like a complete dick for the rest of his life until he gets old enough and becomes a rapper. Yeah, probably. That's his destination. Yeah, I'm gonna be a rapper. My name's Northwest. I'm gonna work in fucking Starbucks with a name like that, are you, mate? Come on. <laughs> Jesus, what is wrong with people? I don't know. I mean, I don't get it. Like, oh yeah, let's name our child this. <laughs> there should be fucking laws against it. One of my other stories I've got Morning. says about the law. Right. That, and I will mention it right now because it actually blends right in. And I'll, I'll scribble it out after. Oh, there it is. It's actually illegal in Sweden to name your child IKEA. <laughs> it should be illegal in America to name your fucking son Northwest. <laughs> All right. Rant over. Lee. Done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to. <laughs> Okay, uh, we have found, we have found, yeah, like I've done it. Yeah, uh, you did. <laughs> astronomers have found three super-Earths capable of supporting life in the nearby solar system of Jalees. Oh, yeah, how many light years? Uh, 22 light years. Away. Oh, no problem, speed of light 22 years, be there tomorrow. Yeah, um, apparently all of them have the right rocky uh, constituents and the atmospheres as well hint at showing the right blend of oxygen, nitrogen and all the, all the other minerals. So yeah, we've uh, found three Earth-like planets in a sol uh, solar system not that far away in terms of the cosmos. And you also said they found water on Mars, didn't they you? They found water on Mars, yeah. yeah. It's looking very good, folks, for the, uh, those who believe that there is life out there in the universe. I think oh, there's it's only a matter of time. there's got to be, not Come on, we could... We, we, where we are, right, if you actually show the entire area, all the galaxies, all the universe, everything like that, we are a speck of fucking dust in one tiny dot of a millions upon billions of planets. We're nothing. There could be planets out there that evolved two and a half million years before we did. Yeah. They could have technology that makes our technology, we think this is so cool, look like shite. Mm. Or it could be like the aliens of Prometheus who just want to kill everything. Yeah, because Joe, you know, that's, that's what? what they wanted to do. Why? Yeah, it wasn't explained, was it? I think they were changing the evolution because the first guy who drinks the stuff, mm. his body breaks apart and you see yeah. his DNA strands come apart and then start to reform in the water. And then in the first scene, he's like this blue stripper. That's right, yeah, he's <laughs> colouring yeah. yeah, and then later on, his body, they don't say that that's a suit because he comes out of the thing and it's like his skin has got the alien-esque ribs. So obviously it's changed his evolution. And I don't know if they were going to Earth to destroy Earth or change our evolutionary path. So I don't know. All I know is I won't be watching the sequel to fucking find out. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> I got another. I got another theory as well. Go on in. That alien at the end of um, Go on in. Prometheus decides to kill everybody. Yeah. He's just been woken up. Yeah. He's been asleep for like sixty thousand years or whatever. I'm tired. I don't want to be asked questions. What do you mean there's no coffee? <laughs> Jesus! We've all been there, folks, and I think that's what it was. He was just cranky after being woken up from a lovely deep sleep. Yep, as I got this morning, woke up, dog barked, woke me up, pushed him off the bed, he was evil. <laughs> and he came back up on the bed straight away, and I went out to say, and there was no coffee. <laughs> Total injustice? Yeah. Sorry, I gotta push your tea back. Oh. It's not the coffee, you just sat in that. Oh, anyway, okay. Connor. Connor. <laughs> in Dunedin, New Zealand, a 64 year old woman, I don't have a name because it was on the condition of anonymity. Yes, you want to go, go on, go on. She woke up in the middle of the night to get some cream for cold sores on her lips. But I ended up fastening her lips together after using super glue by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> she was forced to call police who feared she was How a How did she do that? Bitch. I don't know. <laughs> because she could only grunt them and hold them on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've worked in places with people like that. <laughs> <sighs> Um, so uh, it's going to sound terrible, but did she have dry lips before she played it? She has now. <laughs> <laughs> it was designed to hold skin together anyway. Uh, Vietnam War. Field injuries. So it was fought. Super good. 
It's about glue. That's why he glues your hand together. Yeah. A fact that was actually also put forward in Dog Soldiers. And most awesome film from the UK. Big ups to the UK film industry. You are going <laughs> through a lot of crap lately with the withdrawal of government funding for your business. And You're in fear. So, well done to you for continuing to prove Cameron and the rest of his cronies wrong. That's right. And Paul. Oh, it's me! Okay, let's have a look, see what we've got today. Oh, I love this one. This will make you wince. Okay. <laughs> China has just held its first national wankathon. <laughs> see, to celebrate the first World AIDS Day. Uh, the male participants wore masks and covered their genitals with an orange bucket, which was there to catch their emissions. <laughs> to keep up the enthusiasm, yeah, enthusiasm, right? Scantily clad women danced around holding sex toys. Nothing weird there then, was there? And they reckon the Japanese are strange. Yeah, bloody hell. How weird is that, huh? Okay, I'm just going to picture those oriental girls in a minute. They had a photograph, they were very pretty, but and they had a set of blow-up sex on it, and they had like old like old vibrators. And there was a bunch of guys with their trousers down, with masks on, an orange bucket that were, num that were numbered. <laughs> and they were obviously doing yeah. what men do uh, behind the buckets. What on earth? How is that good? Yes, support National AIDS Day. Let's toss ourselves off in public in a into a bucket. <laughs> And they wonder why alien life doesn't come to this planet. <laughs> That's why aliens don't talk to us. Damn right, they probably go, have you seen that? Oh, orange buckets. Go, Hold on, don't we use them as cups on our planet? Yes. Ew! Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to answer for it. It's very strange indeed. Well, Me? Right. Yeah. Uh, a man and eight other people have been hospitalised after they were in a pool which was filled with liquid nitrogen at a Jägermeister party in Mexico. The organiser fo organizers thought it was a good idea to fill this uh, swimming pool with liquid nitrogen and to get their party goers <coughs> to swim and dance around in this water. Liquid nitrogen? Yeah. And then, uh, before they knew it, people started passing out, disappearing beneath this cloud which appeared, and uh, they had to call the emergency services. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so obviously you didn't risk assess that one, did you? No. It turned out that the liquid nitrogen reacted with the chlorine in the pool to produce this really toxic gas. Oh god, they left chlorine in the pool as yeah. well. Yeah. Oh dear god. Why not just pour a fill it with bleach and acid? <laughs> yeah, and Make, be done with it. <laughs> no, you, once you mix that together, you get mustard gas. Hey, just do that. You want to kill your party goers, or just get them lined up against the wall and shoot them with a gun. How dumb can you people be? Dear God, Connor, your turn. A motorist driven round the bend by the pure, pure, pure noise his van's engine was making found a kitten stuck behind the dashboard. Ah. Carpenter Chris Bale, 46, feared the squeaking was a fault until mechanic James blew it. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, for a mechanic. <laughs> or Blair Witt, however you pronounce it. Go on. From the eight-week-old cat. He had his two sons travel up and as they listened for hours, they couldn't hear anything and they thought he was losing the plot. The more he spent more than a week stuck, in, stuck inside the car without any water, food or sunlight before he was rescued. Aww. They couldn't find anything, but as they shone a torch up into the gap in the dashboard, they saw the tips of the, the kitten jewels. Poor thing. As they went in further, then they saw the eyes staring back at it. The um, he also christened it Dash. Oh, that's cool. Uh, after being treated by a vet for malnourishment, the, the Dash has made a full recovery. Hey. Oh, that's worrying, isn't it? Well, that's how we had our one cat Missy. She mm. climbed up in my wife's car when she was in Newport, and she was on top of the engine block. When my wife parked the car up, I saw a car, a cat, come down from underneath the car and walk out. So that's how we got Missy. Don't where she come from. You put somewhere probably. Okay, I've got a good one. Alright. Right. right. I'm just trying to work out how stupid some people can actually be. Because there's a guy called Jamie Neal, right? In the UK. He robbed the petrol station in Cornwall last September. Now he was out of his head on alcohol and drugs. Um, 
and he decided, yay, let's rob the uh, rob this petrol station. So his one mate grabbed the scarf, wrapped it on his face. Jamie ah, grabbed the plastic bag, a see-through one, and put it over his head. Well, you saw, so you can see his face straight through it. Just hoping so like he didn't duct tape it at the bottom, I suppose. Um, also, he had his mobile phone in his pocket and pointed it at the cashier and said, give me all your money. And as he's saying, give me all your money, his phone goes off. <laughs> <sighs> he has been caught and remanded in custody. He's also fa facing a jail sentence. But come on, we're going to rob a bloody place. <laughs> Let's put a see-through bag on my head. <laughs> And use your mobile phone as a yeah. weapon. <laughs> so it just proves, yeah, just goes to prove not all the stupid robberies in America. Some of them are actually in Cornwall. But you may notice that wasn't in Wales. That was in England. We're not all stupid. But it's just crazy, it's just amazing. It, let's rob a place, let's put a see through bag on my head. What's wrong with this boy's out of his head on drinking drugs, I suppose? Probably, yeah. Uh... I, I got a quick one you can have if you want it. Go on in. Um, oh, you like Kim. Do you? How about this one? Kim Jong Un. Yay! Kim Jong Il's son. Yeah. Uh, seems to think North Korea is the next hot vacation destination. Oh, God, no. Yeah, yeah, he's building a beach resort in Wonsan, in the Wonsan district. It's going to have like a beach resort, nice hotels and everything. You know, your own nuclear bombs point at your building. Awesome. Possible death, murder, and slaughter. Outside your windows, it's great. I, I, I'm not booking a ticket to go there. No, definitely no. not. I'll be the same. I ain't going nowhere near North Korea. Thank you very much. You probably get free Starcraft in every room. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what the North Korean's internet connections are like in the South. Yeah. Starcraft. Dun 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 dun. We have arrived. We are in the Gaveni. The Abra Gaveni, if you will. Yes, the Abba of Gaveni. And we'll end on a story now, which is from actually from uh, James, who was not with us today. Yes, well done, James. Uh, his story is about um, the Xbox One console and the fact that Microsoft had decided to remove all the DRM restrictions, which were going to be on the console, uh, which they announced at E3. And of course, there was a big backlash about it. Um, from the gaming industry, especially when Sony came out and said, well, our console does the exact opposite and allows you to play used games as often as you want and share your games, etc. And then within like 48 hours, Microsoft probably said, oh, pretended, right, that didn't exist. Our console actually does it. So, uh, yeah, well done, Microsoft. I think the damage has already been done with a lot of gamers and you won't get as many sales as you'd hoped. But you yeah. still got to keep the bloody Kinect connected. Yeah, so that's still going to um, continue to spy on you while you sleep. Mm. What you need to do is actually take a photograph of something, mm. like your room, empty, yeah. and then just put it up in front of the Connect. Yeah. You're going to know. Handy advice from Paul Jeffries. Yes. Also, uh, I've seen lots of films, that's the perfect way to rob a bank, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, you get like photographs and you put them up right in front of the lens. And, you know, because obviously you can tell without looking at the lens how far the focal point is. You know if it's in focus or not. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> and welcome back to part two, where we're just about to tell you more stories and silly things and talk about films. And I must just go run down a zebra crossing again. Third time in two weeks, I'm going to kill someone. Okay, that's off my chest. I feel much better. Uh, shall, shall I start with the story of the Minnesota Iceman? Yes, I'm intrigued. Okay, uh, the Minnesota Iceman is a mysterious frozen creature from the 60s. Uh, a guy spotted this uh, just over six foot tall hairy creature mm -hmm. and shot it. I think he shot it twice. I went through the, the, the body and went through the, uh, through the head. Oh, bumpity bumpity. Now, it disappeared. Right, nobody knew where it went. It got taken around all different like shopping areas and whatever, uh, frozen and pre preserved for quite a few years, and they disappeared. But it's, it's resurfaced. Right now, nobody knows exactly what it is. It's big and it's covered in hair, and recent photos show a blurry, non-distinct image. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. The description is that the eye was blown out and the arm is broken, and it does not look happy. Well, I'm not surprised. Just been fucking shot, but um. Everyone reckons it's a Bigfoot, but now it's been found again, 
and owned by this one guy. Perhaps he might be nice enough to let other people get DNA and work on where it is. Yeah. But nobody knows this. We went around in the 60s and there's images of it online now and you look at it and you think, yeah, what am I looking at again? Might as well have been the field with the two Bigfoot I talked about last time. But like I said, this has been in the 60s and all the years it's been disappeared, the guy who actually had it kept it in a giant freezer in his fucking house. But he died. And his family have actually sold it on to this other guy now. So, you know, it's, it's resurfaced and let's hope and pray we can actually have get some decent photographs of it, some decent images of it and see where it is. Yeah. Might just been a really hairy bloke who didn't have any clothes. Could be. It could be Bobo's uh, father. I mean, as he, yeah, as it is, yeah, but Bobo's father. Uh, I don't know, he's committed murder and got away with it and now he's dead. It's, you know, nobody's <laughs> going to be able to do anything, are they? But yeah, that's, uh, that's supposedly Bigfoot. Because if it's six foot tall, it's not that big, is it? No. No. Small foot. A short foot. All women love a short foot. Sorry. Dear, dear, dear. Lee! Okay. Uh, somebody phoned the police not so long ago to complain that their prostitute wasn't attractive enough. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm sure that's not the police you got a phone, that's probably, <laughs> it's, I'm not too sure what it is, but it's definitely in the police. Yeah, and it wasn't in America, it was oh. in this country. Oh, what? I know. Oh, God bless, it's just nice to know that we are actually you know, breeding a generation of real retards. <laughs> I've seen the film Idiocracy, it's coming true. Oh, God, that's brilliant. Yeah. That's like the one story I said about the guy who complained, because he reckoned, you know, that his, his, his dealer was shortchanging him. Yeah. <laughs> Mental. Yeah, brilliant. Connor! Oh. Right, uh, yeah. There was a story earlier about the, uh, was it the robber. Uh, yes, the with a plastic bag in his head. Speaking about robbers, um, well, most muggers take care to you know, make sure they don't get caught by, by themselves with sunglasses, masks, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Zachary tends tend to me. We play very easily for police when he allegedly attack a woman. By leaving behind his birth certificate, a letter addressed to him from his mother. Oh, that's brilliant! During the mugging in or did Boston, somebody set him up? In the in America, he grabbed the woman's wallet containing the phone numbers, and uh, he left behind two bags with the incriminating birth certificate and letter according to reports. <laughs> and uh, police didn't have to look too far to find the prime suspect on Monday. <laughs> oh, that's genius! I'm really liking the geniusnessness of it. Um, that's what the 26 year old allegedly lied to police during questioning by giving them a false name, but was later identified by the one in charge for an armed robbery. <laughs> oh, what? Well, actually, they found him one street away from where the woman was mugged. <laughs> we don't want to walk too far once you've done a, a, a bit of tiring mugging, you know what I mean? It's exertion, it's a cardiovascular exercise for a mugger, exercise. <clears throat> anyway, um. I'm going to talk about the ghost hunter guys now. Right. They apparently they were in a, uh, a fort uh, where Jewish people after the Second World War were kept. Right. Uh, they were doing an EVP session, and when they played it back, they heard a scream, which was apparently very clear, and they also heard people talking in a foreign language. They were bo all, the, all the team are quite excited about it, and uh, they're having everything all sort of checked out. Now, I used to watch Ghost Hunters quite a lot. Right up until one episode where they reckon they put a pram for them to fit a, fit a video and they're saying this pram started moving. And it was really, really obvious at the corner it was out of just out of frame yeah. and somebody was moving it. After that, I stopped watching because it was like watching, I might as well just been watching a, a document, what, a TV comedy. It was just stupid. So I'm hoping this is real. It'd be nice. Dead bug at the windscreen. Um, but with their track record after that, I don't want to know. Yeah. Oh. It's always a pressure to... Um, to find a ghost. Exactly, especially when you're on a network and your first season is successful. And this network wants you to produce the ratings over and over and over again. And of course, there's going to be times that uh, you're going to be investigating and nothing's going to happen. Exactly. So, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's many shows up there that do resort to that kind of uh, tactic. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not mentioning any names. <laughs> okay. This is quite a, a long story. 
uh, but it's to do with the TV license. And there's a story recently, um, it was revealed that uh, there are many excuses given for people not paying. And here are the top 12. Okay, uh, number one is why would I need a, need a TV license for a TV I stole? Nobody knows I've got it. That was like one. it! Let's try that one. Yeah. Number two. I have lost weight recently and had to buy new clothes. That's why I could not afford to buy a TV license. Seems, seems, I, I'll believe that one. <laughs> Number three. I have not paid as I have received a lethal injection. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously a very slow <laughs> acting lethal injection. Yeah. Number four. Apparently my dog, which is a corgi, was related to the Queen's dog. So I don't think I needed a TV license. Number five on the list is, I don't want to pay for a license for a full year. Knowing my luck, I'll be dead in six months and won't get value for money. Connor, have you been phoning up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> the shop on my road was closed and I could not get to the shop anyway as the road was too busy. Oh, that's fair enough. Somebody online reckons you should actually replace what that's what she said with the, that's how my grandmother died and see what happens. <laughs> I can't do that because it's just been cut off. That's how my grandmother died. <laughs> See, it works. I want everyone to do that. That was Roll the Diggity on Twitter. Go there, he's brilliant. Awesome. Okay, number seven. Sorry. I use my TV as a lamp. If you switch it on, it gives a good glow, which, you, which I use to read my book. Number eight. The only way I can afford to pay for my TV license is if I sell my hamster. Is that what you want me to do? Yes. They're the BBC, they need new cars for their stars, or directors, or wherever it's like tosses running now. Number nine. Only my three-year-old son watches the TV. Can you take it out of the family allowance that I receive for him? He watches it, so he should play. Number ten. I spent so much time at my neighbour's house, we thought we would just share a TV licence. My neighbour is the other half. Two more to go. Number eleven. I could not pay as I only have two pairs of pants and they were both in the wash. <laughs> and finally, number 12. I got caught shoplifting, so I'm barred from the shop that takes pay point payment. <laughs> now, at least that's relatively believable. <laughs> now, before Connor jumps in and does something, I'd like to talk about Man of Steel. Yes, the review. Yes, a quick review of Man of Steel. Connor hasn't seen it. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, stick your fingers in your ears, all right? No. Okay. Now, I'm not a massive Superman fan here. I've never been a big DC guy. I've always been Marvel. Uh, but, you know, you saw Cavill in the suit and he looked really impressive. He's an imposing looking character. Yeah, he is. As Superman. Um, unfortunately, that's where the good parts end. For me, personally. Um, I found that it was... It's like drawn out and over long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, um, I found that it was a noisy CGI festival of shaky camera work and explosions. Yeah. I was also something about the flying. I don't know, it just looked really, really ropey. And it's in my favorite, like the flying sequences in the Brandon Routh Superman re uh, Returns was better than the flying sequences in this film. And of course, to wrap it off for me, which really, really, really pissed me off was that stupid cape. It flapped in the wind like his mom's silk scarf. It just had no substance to it, no body to it. It just felt like it was an afterthought. I'm also special about Superman's cloak, or cape, that he didn't catch fire, but Zod's did. Eh? Hmm. Well, apparently S stands for hope. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah. It's on planet. Uh, and your opinions, sir? Yeah, I, I kind of agree with Paul and oh, all excuse of me, as well. Does. Um, there was a couple of bits in the film, um, because I, I myself, I'm not a big Superman fan, I was left feeling what? What? What's going on here now? And again, it was way too long, way, way, way too long. Uh, and then at the end, the fight sequence between Superman and Zod it just went on for ages as well. And it was a hell of a lot of collateral damage. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Now, Chris Reeve, God bless the man, right, would have tried to fly away from the city, if he could, 
and help and, and, and lower, lower the death toll down. Yeah. But this Superman, yeah. stand in the middle of Seoul, Smallville and destroy it. Let's stand in the middle of New York and destroy it yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Flying through, like smashing through apartment blocks, bringing them all crashing down, everything. Yeah. Yeah, apparently he's all good. What about the people inside the building that Superman's meant to save? Fuck it, they're humans, he's not. Yeah. yeah. And um, it, and it oh, was, go on. It, it, the other thing that really annoys me, and this will be a spoiler, and you put spoilers up on it too. If anybody haven't seen it, right? Bad luck. Um, Lois Lane. Sorry, she just doesn't come across as Lois Lane. I like Amy Adams. I find her a very good, uh, uh, funny comedian. But she works out, oh, this guy's done all these wonderful things. So let's follow his story back, all the way back to Smallville. And like everyone in Smallville knows that Clark Kent has superpowers. And at the end of the film, when he comes in as Clark Kent, looks no fucking different to Superman except with a pair of glasses on. Yeah. At least with Christopher Reeve, they made his ears. I mean, he did look so like, okay, you could still see it was Christopher Reeve, but at least they made them look drastically different. Yeah, I mean, this, okay. yeah this guy just comes in with the same curly haircut as he's got as Superman, with a pair of glasses. Pair of glasses on. And Lois Lane knows who Superman is. Come on! It's just, oh! Dear God, two and a half hours, I'm never getting back. And it was a good uh, prop point I noticed as well, is when they capture Lewis Lane and take it back to the mothership, why did they put her in a room with his command console? And yeah. she conveniently has the key on her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And why have they conveniently got a key that takes that uh, uh, thing for the, uh, the, from the DNA skull thing that um, Robin had yeah. uh, necked? That's not cool. Yeah, Robin Hood. Yeah, because yeah, you know, Superman's both dads were Robin Hood. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Russell Crowe, Kevin Costner. And what the fuck was that about with Kevin Costner? No, Clark, don't save me, because I'm saving a dog. <laughs> we don't want people to know you're Superman. Everyone fucking knew he was <laughs> Superman anyway! Yeah. I'll just die in this tornado, conveniently. And is jor in every single ship then? I, yeah, he must be. Because as soon as you place our end, he appears. Hey, I'm jor -El. I'm your friendly Tom-Tom. Turn left at the next star. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. For 250,000 light years. <laughs> but oh my god, yes, oh, just done my head in. Uh, I know there are people out there who will disagree with me. Uh, one of the guys I work with, Kieran, lovely bloke, right? Loved the film. I couldn't see how we would. Because, oh, dear god, I want to kill people. Yeah. Yeah, done my head in. Um, let's hope that the second one will be better. I won't be watching it. Uh, but, you know. It doesn't bode well for Cavill because he did this and before this he did Immortals. Oh. And that really sucked donkey balls. Yeah. Dear God. Right, I think we've had enough of a rant of that, what do you reckon, yeah? Yeah, and I think so. I think, Connor, please give us something exciting in daft. The corporate began a 20 hour internet and mobile phone outage. There's a factor almost 2,000 people has finally been identified as a beaver. <laughs> hey, I love Beaver. More known to build in dams, this particular problem took by the ball itself and chewed through a fibre line last week, knocking up services in northern New Mexico and the US. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless him. CenturyLink spokesman David Gonzalez said the Beaver's internet activities were discovered by contractors looking to repair the backups. Yeah, you got to... internet activity. you got to watch out for internet activity, especially if it contains Beaver. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incognito browsing. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually got three little ones by now, but I'm, gonna, I'm done if I do all of them. But anyway, uh, Vin Diesel has dropped hints that he might be joining the Marvel franchise. No clue as who he will be yet, but people are rumouring that they'd like him to be Black Panther. And we're going to get all these people going now. Oh, Black Panther's black! Yeah, well, the Kingpin was white. Yeah. All right. And Nick Fury was white. Yeah, but at least they had a precedence for that because in the alternate universe, Nick Fury was black and they drew him to look a bit like Samuel L. Jackson anyway, so. At least they had a precedence for it. But yeah, the Kingpin was black and he's supposed to be white. The new Johnny Storm, they reckon, is going to be black and he's supposed to be white because his sister's white. So I'm sorry, if you can do that, why can't the Black Panther be Vin Diesel? Yeah, exactly. Either that or they reckon he might be Venom or Carnage and he's big enough for the part, I'd say. But you know, that's that. That's that little story for Two with Film. Yeah. Your turn. Okay. Um, a woman was caught trying to sit exam, tried to sit an exam for her daughter. Uh, she was 52 and uh, from France. 
She dressed like a teenager and sat at to her daughter's end of term English exam. But she was caught out when an invigilator who had seen her daughter earlier in the day walked past and thought, did she look a bit old for this? And she got caught out, waited till the end of the exam, and that's when she was found. Dear, dear. I mean, okay, you can get, you probably get away if the daughter was like 18 and the mother had the child really young and she was like about 30, but 52? Yeah. Jesus Christ, that's my age. I mean, you wouldn't do it. Yes, everyone, I'm old. It's official. I don't know if Connor's got a quick one. I can do two quick ones for me too. You got a quick one, Connor? You do it because I, I can't. You sure? Yeah, I Both to do with films. Independence Day 2 is on the books. Um, no Will Smith because apparently he said he didn't want to be in it. They, enough, they, wanted, they wanted to do a cameo. Uh, he might do. Uh, but Jeff Goldblum and Bill Pullman are in it for sure. They've said yes. Also, plans are being made to make a Captain Planet film. That's going to suck so bad. Um... Also, speaking of films, uh, there I know, it's when I spotted it, uh, Mike shared it on Facebook. Yeah. They're remaking the Terminator trilogy. Yeah. From the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I actually read that and I was like... I know that, um, uh, maybe, uh, Schwarzenegger said that he was going to be making uh, Terminator 5 and apparently he wants The Rock to be in it. And I think The Rock as a Terminator would be awesome. Mm. I mean, that guy's huge at the moment. He's feckin' ridiculously huge. But oh, from, the, from the beginning it. again? Please. I know. It's, oh, for Christ's sake, just leave them alone. Classic films are ruining them with these crappy half-hearted remakes. Next thing you know, they'll remake Rambo. Don't start. Oh, yeah, I can give him time. I, I have a cheese just found. I've got one more short story. One more short story. Really, really quick. A cop shot a man because he thought he was holding a gun. But he was actually only holding underwear. Huh? Yeah, he had a pair of black pants in his hand. The cop thought he was holding a gun and he shot him. In America, that was. Oh, what? I think that cop needs to go back and have his eyes tested. Yeah. Only in America. Oh, in America, man. America. America's great, man. Yeah. Where the burgers are like you know, the size oh, yeah. of cars. And, and Burger people are... King have invented the burger holder, which goes around your neck and it sits right in front of you. You put your burger in it and you don't need your hands to eat it. Jesus Christ, aren't those people fat enough already? Yeah. Come on. No, aren't they lazy enough already? Yeah. Oh I've been to America, the part I've been to, there's no there's no many obese people, but I'm sorry, but in other parts it's massive they are obese. ridiculously stupid at some point. Yeah. And the UK's starting to follow America's trends, unfortunately. Exactly. Yeah, all the fast food. Even down to the goddamn slang. YOLO. Yeah. Swag. Yeah. <sighs> I said, my, my, my boys called out a sidewalk the other week and I went nuts on them. I said, it's a fucking pavement. And it's not an elevator, it's a lift. Yep. And when you get people going, oh yeah, I need some dollar. Actually, what you need is pounds. If you want dollars, move to America. Right, simple enough. And nothing against the Americans, but we don't need your slang. We've got a plenty of our own crap slang. Anyway, I will say to her, uh, that's the end of episode 32. It is indeed. Bye from me, from Lee and... From Connor. Hopefully on the next one we'll actually have James. I mean maybe. Nightmare, nightmare or Deathbeard. Nightmare Death or Deathbeard. Because he's been either on, action for And say in Deathbeard, I give Superman, the Man of Steel, out, out, out of five Deathbears, 0.5 of a Deathbear. Bing! And that's being generous. That's so, just for the so, suit, the caper shirt. Yeah, as my mother-in-law. Ah. Anyway, it's bye from everyone now. We'll catch you on episode 33. Bye.